my God, you are worthy to be praised. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So praise is a vital spiritual weapon for winning every impossible battle in your life. Because like I said the other time, there is no challenge that will require more than God's presence to bow. No challenge. So all we are going to have to do is to lift up praise unto him. From today, I declare this church a house of praise. Amen. And everybody here is we are the people of praise. Amen. Bringing praise unto God. Do you know why the devil, when he was in heaven, called Lucifer? Do you know why he was so anointed that every other angel in heaven? Because he was the angel of praise and worship. He was the only angel that stood where no other angel ever stood. The Bible says he was the only one that was walking in between the stones of fire on the mountain of God in the cherubim and the seraphim. No angel have had the opportunity to be there. He appeared on the mountain of God before God. Why? Because he was bringing praise and worship to God. And so he was anointed above all. That is why it came to a point he thought he could be like God. Because of the, the magnitude of the anointing God released on him. Not because he was better than a, uh, the other angels, but because he was the one that was bringing praise and worship. So if you are somebody that always brings praise and worship to God, you become a sign and a wonder. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The only thing God enjoys from us is praise and worship. So why wouldn't you give it to him so you will get what you want? Yes. Complaining, murmuring, nagging, bitterness are of the devil. They destroy destinies. We heard it last week. How those that came out of Egypt could not enter the promised land because of complaining and murmuring. And so if the enemy wants to stop you from entering in your entering your glorious God-given destiny, all he does is to, you know, force you to, to, to nag, to complain, to see the negative side of everything. Hey. So you will complain. And when you do that, God withdraws because God can't stand that atmosphere. Yes. God will not withdraw from us oh, again. Yeah. Yes. Praise unto him. Yes. Because when you praise him, he comes to indwell. He inhabits your life. And when he, he, he inhabits your life, the Bible says in the book of Romans 8, 31, if God be for us, who can be against us? Hallelujah. If he be for us, there is no challenge, no situation, no man, no woman, no yes. devil that can be against us. Yes. When he be for us, and so give him the praise. Let him inhabit your life. Don't care about what any, any devil is trying to do. Just concern yourself with your work with God by giving him quality praise. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If God be for us, who can be against us? I can't think of anything in this world that can stop me from reaching where God has destined me to reach. Amen. No situation, no devil. In the face of all those things, by the power of God, by the hand of the Almighty, by the Holy Ghost, we are gallantly breaking through, triumphantly walking on into our Canaan land. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God once showed me a revelation. I think I've shared it with you before. And uh, I even shared it with uh, our father, Pastor Dika. How all of a sudden I saw myself traveling. I was walking and then like a like like a lightning from heaven you know there was this this lightning and then there was this uh, something like a heavy ball that, that dropped and exploded into fire and the, the whole place was on fire i mean blazing fire i mean there was no way you anybody could dare or walk through that fire now this fire was in my way and i stood and i look at it 
And I said, no way, there is no way I'm going to go through this fire. That means if I take this fire, I'm finished. Let me go back. And later on, when the fire is done, you know, is gone, I will start my journey again. So I turn back like this, and I discovered the distance I have covered. I'm like, what? I'm going to walk all this way back and start all over again? I turn, I look at the fire. I said, but I can't dare this fire to So what would... If I go back, it means all the journey to this place has been wasted. And the fire tree is right in front of me. Now, this was in a clear revelation, as if I was watching a video. And as I was standing, all of a sudden, the Spirit of God brought the scripture, life in my spirit. He said, even when you go through the fire, I am with you, and the flame shall not kindle against you. The moment that came into my spirit, I said, yes! I will go through this fire. It cannot hurt me. It cannot touch me. And then I started going. I stepped into the fire. Yes, I was feeling the heat, but it could not burn me. Not even a hair on my skin was burned. And I walked through the fire for some time until I came to the end. And the moment I came out of the fire, I was standing right in front of Canaan land. And I said, Ha! Huh? How did I come this far? How did I get here? And then God started ministering to me. He said, son, there may be some challenges that might come your way, but I am with you and I will take you through and you will come into my promised land for you. Yes. I mean, this was a clear revelation. I shared it with our father, Pastor Dinka. He said, son, keep moving on. Nothing will stop you. Don't let anything distract you in your walk with God and your service to Him. Are you understanding me? So, why am I sharing this this uh, uh, revelation with you? Because in the midst of fire that you might be going through, all you are going to need is His presence with you. Are you understanding me? Because yes. when He is with you in the fire, the fire cannot hurt you. Yes. And the only way to bring Him into the fire is to lift up praise unto Him. Not complaints, not murmuring, not nagging, not talking as if God is wicked to you. Like I told you, uh, a lady that sent me a message said, uh, I'm disappointed in God. Uh, I don't feel like going to church anymore. I say, well, that's your decision, but uh, let me open your eyes to something. If you are mad at the one who laid his life down for you, you are mad at the one who loved you. You are mad at the one who provides for you. You are mad at the one who, who gives you life. You are mad at the one who protects you. Then tell me, do you think you are going to go another day from where you are standing today without him? And that's what the devil is doing to a lot of people. When they are confronted with challenges, the, the devil makes them think it's God that is not being good to them. It's God that is not being fair to them. <laughs> You know, he blinds their eyes from seeing that it is he, the devil, that is behind those challenges. Because he's afraid that they will attack him. You know, that when it comes to a child of God, the devil doesn't have any power. He's, he's nobody. That's right. Are you understanding me? Yes. The power he has over Christians are the ones they allow him to have. Through, by, I mean, through ignorance. But if you understand who you are in Christ, you know that the devil is nobody. He's not even an issue. That is why over here we don't mention his name. It's not an issue. Are you understanding me? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so, praise, lifting up praise unto him. Lifting up.